Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 22nd September 2018. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, in today's topics, we look at oil and gold using technical analysis. They tend to impact related stocks. When we swing trade stocks, we like to align them with the broad market's direction. We'll study the market direction using NASDAQ and NYSE market bread and technical analysis of broad market ETFs. In addition to aligning trades with the market's direction, we like to align them with the industry strength. We'll study industry strength using scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may look at some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum and look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis using oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this at a glance template because this template helps us decide if there is a low risk swing entry opportunity at the right edge of the chart in only a few seconds. This week oil went up, the weekly backdrop candle color remains cyan. In the last market roundup, I mentioned it was inside triangle pattern bound by resistance memory and support memory. That resistance memory was broken on Wednesday and now price closed close to the upper boundary lines. It is too overextended for us to take any long trade. If oil pulls back little bit and then goes up, it may give us a trend following long trade opportunity. Gold ETF GLD Gold was falling sharply and its backdrop candle color was magenta. Then for four successive weeks the candle color turned yellow neutral and this week the candle color turned bullish cyan. However, this week's candle shape is neutral both with upper and lower tails. There is also a memory resistance line in the weekly chart until price can go above the memory resistance line. Traders may avoid taking long trade in gold. In the daily chart, as was discussed in the last market roundup also, gold continues to remain inside narrow range. Q traders may wait for gold to break out of this range before trying any long trade. From commodities analysis, we move on to market breadth analysis. We are looking at NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index, both using weekly charts. Because this analysis is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval, it is to be used for long term investment decisions not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. 
NASDAQ had displayed a bearish headwind signal two weeks ago and the candle color is remaining neutral. This week's candle is very indecisive shape candle and the color is also neutral. NASDAQ internals all decline, new high low, advanced decline and up down volume. So the internals are weak for this week. NASDAQ candle tried to touch the memory support line and went up from there. This memory support line is providing robust support. NYSE went up. The NYSE weekly candle shape and color both are bullish. NYSE now is clearly outperforming NASDAQ. NYSE is also supported by multiple memory support lines. New high low went down, advanced decline also went down, though up down volume went up. The internals are giving a mixed picture. When we look at all the data, we have to conclude that in the longer term, both NASDAQ and NYSE are in uptrend. They will remain in uptrend until these memory support lines are broken. This week's internals are mixed. Five of the six internals went down and three of them closed below zero. Let us see what is the picture we get from studying the broad market ETFs. S&P 500 ETF SPY. SPY made a new all-time high this week. Though the weekly backdrop candle color changed to neutral yellow, and the weekly candle shape is also indecisive. In the daily chart, on Thursday, it could break above the watermark resistance line. Thursday had very high activity. Friday turned down also with very high activity. The SPY ETF is clearly in uptrend. However, if we look at the activity pattern, we see that most of the high activity days are down days shown in red color and not up days. That is giving some cause for concern. You will let us see that this activity pattern is present in most of the other market ETFs as well. NASDAQ 100 ETF QQQ Two weeks ago, it displayed a bearish headwind signal. Since then, the weekly backdrop candle color is remaining bearish, magenta. However, the memory support line in the weekly chart is providing robust support. In the daily chart, NASDAQ ETF is in uptrend. However, it could not make a new all-time high like SPY. The activity pattern is showing that most of the heavy activity days are down days, not up days. Dow Jones Industrial ETF DIA. DIA also made a new all-time high. The weekly backdrop candle color and shape both are bullish. It is very close to the watermark resistance in the weekly chart. We have to see whether it creates a false upside breakout by tilting down next week. In the daily chart, DIA is clearly in uptrend. This is the only ETF that is not showing the activity pattern of heavy days being down days. We have several heavy activity days being up days in the recent periods. Russell 2000 ETF IWM like QQQ IWM also displayed a bearish headwind signal in the weekly chart two weeks ago and since then the weekly backdrop candle color is remaining bearish magenta. In the daily chart it tried to go above the memory resistance line on Friday. Friday had a gap up open day how far price dropped from there. In fact, it gave us a gap short day trade opportunity that turned out to be very profitable. 
the activity pattern is showing that most of the heavy activity days are down days shown by red color not up days overall the market spread and the market etfs are showing that the price moves are very bullish however the activity patterns in most of the etfs is giving some concern about the strength of the price move some concern is also there from the sector analysis let us move to sector analysis now four week sector performance of 11 sectors the red bar represents performance of this week green bar represents performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar represents performance of two weeks prior to the green bar together this represents performance of four weeks or about one month of performance this week nine of the 11 sectors gain showing a bullish picture at the sector level how far q scorecard is showing heavy sector rotation this indecision is evident from the sector performance graph as well only real estate sector here is consistently bearish all other sector bars are showing flip-flop for example materials is up this week red bar is to the right of the zero line however blue bar is to the left so it had declined in recent weeks same is true for energy for finance for industrials etc real estate is the only sector that is consistently down across all the three review periods i shared a timely bearish call on iwr the real estate etf on 18th september q weekly chart had displayed bearish headwind four weeks ago that could catch the very top of iwr momentarily we will look at the forum topic that I shared on IWR. Information technology is down this week. Not so long ago, Infotech was the most robust sector for many months. And now Q scorecard and heat map is highlighting the transition from strength to weakness. This is now the weakest sector. If we drill down the industry heat map, further shows that the infotech weakness is pervasive in all the underlying industries which is the sector where you might look for buy opportunity that is materials materials is not only the strongest sector for this week but this is a sector that was weak for a long time and now strengthening the strengthening is very clear from the sector heat map as well as the industry heat map and scorecard all materials industries barring wood and forest products are gaining strength let us have a look at the forum topic shared on iwr and then look at q scorecard to see how the sectors are moving from strength to weakness and weakness to strength this is the forum topic on IWR that I shared five days ago, the case for shorting real estate ETF. This is how the chart looked at that time. In the weekly chart, there was a bearish headwind four weeks ago. Since then, IWR was gradually coming down. When I shared the post, the weekly candle was closing below the memory support line. The weekly candle color was magenta and the shape was bearish. In the daily chart, IWR was inside a triangle pattern. However, at the right edge, it was breaking below the memory support line. The relative performance was very weak. 
I also looked at all the real estate industries and I saw that most of them were transitioning from strength, cyan in the middle of this scorecard, to weakness, magenta at the left hand side. That led me to share this post indicating that there may be a low risk short opportunity in IWR. Let us have a look at the sector scorecard to see how real estate and other sectors are shifting between strength and weakness. Q scorecard, it analyzes the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and 1 day periods. I mentioned there is some concern about the bullishness of the market from the sector heat map that is because of the checkered pattern you see across all the review periods. Most of the sectors are shifting between strength and weakness between cyan and magenta colors. That is making it difficult to take a directional trade and hold on to it. Most probably it is getting stropped out. That is the picture we get from the sector level. If we look at the sector performance until this week, we see that Infotech is now the worst performing sector with a score of 1 magenta color and the best performing sector is Materials with score 11. Infotech is shifting from strength cyan color to weakness magenta and Materials is shifting from weakness magenta to strength sand color. That is why it will be a good idea now to protect or book profit in Infotech stocks and look for buy opportunities in material stocks. If we drill down inside Infotech, we see that most of the Infotech industries were stronger earlier than in the recent week clearly showing that the weakness in Infotech is all pervasive. What about materials industries? Materials industries shown here are displaying the opposite characteristics. Most of these industries were weaker earlier and now turning into strength. That is why I mentioned it would be Good idea to look for value buy opportunities in material stocks. You may further drill down into these industries to look for low risk buy opportunities. In Q scorecard, this week's best performing industries are shown in cyan color over 5 days period. Aluminium and diversified banks. Both are very strong this week. In addition, both of them were weak earlier, shown in magenta color and now turning into strength, cyan color. These are ideal industries to look for buy opportunities. They may end up being long swing trade opportunities as well as longer term investment buy opportunities. Let's drill down into aluminium. CENX is a stock with medium valuation. Valuation is shown in yellow color and it has excellent earnings growth in the latest quarter. Earnings growth jumped from 20% one quarter ago to 3100% in the latest quarter. It also has a short squeeze potential shown by cyan color under the short squeeze column. The stock went up by 17% in this week. Let us have a look at its technical charts. CENX, after a significant downturn this week in the weekly chart, it broke out of the memory resistance line with very high activity. In the daily chart, it had displayed a bullish headwind signal since then price didn't go down much. On this candle we had a box long trade setup 
price reversed from the watermark support level with bull release signal and with very high activity. A long could be taken at the close of that day with stop just below recent low and partial profit could be booked as price hit the declining yellow direction line. The industry is one of the best performing industries. The stock is fundamentally strong and the technicals are very bullish. Under such circumstances, one would not like to close the full position with discipline. Partial profit would be booked and partial position would be held trying to let profit run. Let us now drill down into diversified banks. In diversified banks, there are multiple South American banks and they went up by significant percentages in the current week. These four stocks, BMA, SUPV, GGAL and BFR went up by 23, 34, 39 and 39.5% respectively. BFR is the best performer that is optimally valued shown by cyan color in valuation primary column and BFR also has accelerating earnings growth. I had discussed BFR as a possible buy opportunity in a recent weekly market roundup. Since then it has significantly gone up. Let us look at BFR technical charts. BFR it displayed a bullish headwind signal in the weekly chart that could catch the very bottom. This week we have a very bullish shape and bullish color candle. It could break out of the memory resistance line with very high activity. In the daily chart also BFR displayed a bullish headwind signal. Since then it is steadily going up. There was a memory resistance line at this level this week on Wednesday that was broken and since then it went up strongly. One could take a long trade on this cyan color candle itself as a go with flow trend following long trade. One would be mindful of the memory resistance nearby and watch carefully if price was reversing from there. Price didn't reverse, instead price sharply broke above the memory resistance line. Therefore, long position taken on the sand color candle could be held until the upper boundary lines were hit and partial profit could be booked at that time. Even if you took a long position, as price was breaking above the memory resistance line on this candle, you would get significant profit. In fact, a long position taken using call option on this day had given more than 170% profit by next day itself. I shared this snapshot in our Twitter forum. Let's have a look at that. This is Superior Profits Twitter page. On 20th September, I shared the BFR follow-up. A call option on BFR, monthly call option, 12.5 strike, taken on this candle as price was breaking out above the memory resistance line, had given more than 170% profit by next day itself. Following Q standard guideline, one would book partial profit. In effect, one could get his or her entire investment money back and then hold on to remaining position using market's money trying to let profit run. As you can see, BFR was not the only South American bank stock that went up. Several other South American banks went up as well. And using Q analysis, you could catch the very low of several of these stocks. From best performing industries, we move on to the worst performing industries. We are looking at their 5 days and 10 days course. 
Real Estate Services is one of the worst performers. We saw a while ago that real estate as a sector is very weak and this industry is very weak for a long time. RDFN is overvalued. It has negative quarterly earnings growth. RDFN fell by 7.2% this week. It had displayed Q trend following short setup on 13th as well as 19th September, both of which turned out to be very profitable. We will momentarily look at real estate services and drill down into RDFN. Later on, we look at two more stocks, EVBG in application software. It fell by 10%. You could probably anticipate the move using Q headwind signal. And BCC in forest products. We saw that all the materials industries other than wood and forest products are strong. Forest products is weak. And BCC in this industry dropped by 12.3%. You could probably anticipate this fall using the reversal from memory and watermark resistances. After the regular topics, I will analyze BCC in more detail. For now, let us look at the worst performing industries in Q scorecard, look at real estate services and drill down into RDFN. In Q scorecard, the worst performing industries of the week are shown in magenta color over 5 days period. Real estate services is one of the weakest industries and it had been weak for a long time. We can see that from the magenta color across many review periods. Let's drill down. RDFN is a stock that is overvalued. We know that from the magenta color under valuation primary column, it has negative recent quarter earnings growth. EPS growth went down by minus 33%. This week, the stock fell down by 7.2%. Let's have a look at it using technical charts. RDFN, it dropped heavily in this area tried to go up and reversed again in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, we can see that the sharp drop was associated with earnings result. From there, price tried to go up, barely crossed above the peak of the gap down day. That was the result of earnings and then declined again from there. We had two candles with magenta color. Both of them could be taken as go with flow short trade setups. Stop would be put just above the recent high. Stop was not hit. Instead, the stock fell down, came very close to the lower boundary lines by this Friday. One could book partial profit on Friday itself. As the stock is weak fundamentally, the industry is very weak. The technicals are weak as well. In this case, one would like to hold partial position trying to let profit run. Every week, we also study the accelerating industries. They tend to be the best performers in subsequent weeks. We are looking at the 5 days and 10 days scores. You can see that all these industries, 5 day scores are significantly higher than their 10 day scores, showing that these industries accelerated. They accelerated over 5 days period. However, from Q scorecard, you can see that many of them decelerated over 2 days and over 1 day period. That is why it was not easy to find long trade opportunity in many of these industries. Instead, I looked at distributors industry. Though it is not in the 10 most accelerating industries list, 
it is also accelerating as seen from Q scorecard and core is a stock in this distributors industry that is medium valued and has increasing quarterly earnings growth. If we look back, we'll see that on 1st June, the weekly bullish headwind caught the very low. Since then, the stock has gone up by more than 75%. The bullish headwind signal was once again very effective in indicating the start of the up move. Now it has pulled back a little bit on the daily chart and it may give a trend following long setup in coming days. Let's have a look at the accelerating industries from Q scorecard, look at distributors and then drill down into core. In Q scorecard, the most accelerating industries are shown in cyan color over page 5 days column. These are the 10 most accelerating industries. They all accelerated over 5 days period. However, if you look at the 2 days and 1 day periods, you will see that several of them turned magenta under the score columns. That is why it was not easy to look for buy opportunities in these industries. One could look at hypermarkets and super centers and also distillers and vintners for buy opportunities. These two industries strengthen, they accelerated and they could hold on to their strengths over Thursday and Friday. I tried to drill down but didn't find any low risk buy opportunity on the technical charts. Instead, I looked at distributors this industry also accelerated. We have the cyan color under page 5 days column and it is strengthening consistently from 10 days to 5 days to 2 days to 1 day periods. I drill down. Core is a stock that is medium valued. Valuation primary is in yellow color and it has accelerating earnings growth in the most recent quarter shown by bright green color. It also has a short squeeze potential. Let us look at course technical charts. Core. Interestingly, it displayed a bullish headwind at the very bottom. That was in the month of June, early June. Since then, the stock has gone up by more than 75 percent. The bullish headwind once again predicted the possible sharp up move in the stock. In the daily chart it moved up sharply. It was above the upper boundary lines. At the right edge it pulled back and now it is starting to go up. The daily candle color has turned yellow. If next week it goes up and the daily candle color turns cyan. That may give us a low risk swing by opportunity in this stock. Decelerating industries. These are the industries where 5 days scores are significantly lower than the 10 day scores, showing that this industry is decelerated. Life science tools and services is one of them. In this industry, PACB is overvalued. It fell by 7.3% this week. Daily bearish headwind on 18 September resulted in a pullback. There is no swing trade opportunity right now. However, you may watch out for a possible low risk short opportunity in the coming days, especially if the industry continues to weaken. Let us look at the decelerating industries in Q scorecard. Look at life sciences, tools, and services, and then drill down into PACB. In Q scorecard, the decelerating industries are shown by magenta color over page 5 days column. Life sciences, tools, and services is weak now, shown in magenta color. 
it decelerated and also it was strong earlier for many review periods cyan color now it turned magenta this is the time to protect profit in any existing long position in this industry stocks and also look for short opportunities let us drill down PACB this stock is overvalued shown by magenta color under valuation column PACB went down by 7.3% this week let's have a look at its technical charts PACB interestingly once again the bullish headwind signals in the weekly chart could catch the very bottom at the right edge in the weekly chart the candle color changed to yellow in the daily chart at the same time a bearish headwind appeared in the daily chart from there price has pulled back little bit it is having memory support lines nearby so we are not going to try any short trade right now if price goes up little bit and tilts down that may give us a low risk go with flow trend following short trade setup alternatively price could go all the way up to the watermark resistance level and till down from there possibly giving us a box short trade opportunity you may keep an eye for such short opportunities those were the regular topics we discussed several stocks under different categories we discussed cenx and bfr best performing industry stocks rdfn worst performing industry stock core in accelerating industry and pscb in decelerating industry i will summarize this week's market roundup now and then i would like to follow up on the telecom stocks that i shared in last week's market roundup these stocks were cnsl t bt kt mbt and tkc i would also like to look at the two stocks ev bg and bcc they are in the worst performing industries of the week we will see how you could use q chart to anticipate their downfall before that let me summarize this week's market roundup market breadth analysis shows that the broad indices are bullish the memory support lines are providing robust support in the longer term the market will remain bullish until the broad indices memory support lines are broken what about the market etfs they are all in uptrend two of the etfs spy and dia made new all time highs this week the same strength is not there in qqq and iwm however all the four etfs are in uptrend so in terms of price moves the market etfs are all bullish when we look at the volume pattern we have some reasons for concern other than for dia for all the remaining three etfs most of the recent high activity days are down days not up days that is giving some concern about the true strength of the bullish move still we have to conclude that the market is bullish there is no other way of assessing the current market when we look at the sector heat map we see very checkered pattern most of the sectors are changing strength to weakness to strength again this may make it difficult to buy a stock and continue to hold on to the stock for longer term at the same time when we drill down to the industries level we can always find stocks where the industry is strong fundamentals 
are strong as well as technicals are strong and look for buy opportunities there you might start looking for buy opportunities in materials sector using this 360 degrees approach using the same approach you would probably be cautious about infotech stocks protect profit in any long position you may have and even look for short opportunities this sector infotech sector was the strongest a few weeks ago now it is the weakest one and all the industries under this sector are showing weakness in this market condition it may be better not to start taking too many long trades instead one may protect profit in existing long positions and even try to balance the long positions with short positions or with protective quotes that was the summary of this week's roundup let me now review some of the stocks that i mentioned earlier let's look at the telecom stocks that i shared in last market roundup that will provide a follow up on these stocks cnsl here the bullish headwinds in weekly chart could catch the very bottom at the right edge the stock is going up in the daily chart we had a trend following go with flow long trend setup on the sand color candle last week market roundup i mentioned that at least partial profit would be booked at the upper boundary lines as the stock's fundamentals technicals as well as industry were strong one would not book profit on full position instead hold on to partial position trying to let profit run that approach was useful as the stock is continuing to go up t here also the bullish headwind in the weekly chart could catch the very bottom of the stock we had a possible trend following long trade setup on the sand color candle in the daily chart as the candle had long upper tail the actual entry could be taken next day in the last market roundup i discussed that partial profit would be booked at the upper boundary lines as the industry was strong the stocks fundamentals were strong technicals were also strong one would hold on to partial position trying to let profit run that was an useful decision as the stock is continuing to go up bt in the weekly chart it was inside triangle pattern supported by memory support line and resisted by multiple memory resistance lines in the last market roundup i mentioned that one might look for a buy opportunity if the stock could break out of these memory resistance lines the memory resistances were in the daily chart as well price has not broken out of them yet if bt can break out of the memory resistance lines you might look for a low risk buy opportunity based on last market roundups analysis we are continuing to keep bt in our watch list kt here also we had bullish headwind signals that came near the very bottom at the right edge kt broke out of the memory resistance line in the weekly chart in the daily chart we had a cyan color candle here last friday that is the friday of one week ago i had discussed that kt gave a go with flow long trade setup at that time i had mentioned that in the previous market roundup since then it has hit the upper boundary lines partial profit could be booked as the fundamentals are strong industry is strong one would hold on to partial position trying to let profit run 
in this case using last week's market roundup one could take a long trade right at the close of friday one week ago and that swing trade has already hit initial profit target mbt this also displayed bullish headwind at the very bottom in the weekly chart at the right edge the stock went up for two successive weeks. In the daily chart, it has created a higher high. If now price pulls back and goes up from there, it may give us a go with flow trend following long trade setup. That would be the first trend following long trade setup in this stock after the sharp down move. You may keep an eye for that buy opportunity. In this case, based on the market roundup of one week ago, we added MBT to the watch list and we are continuing to keep it in our watch list. TKC, this is the last telecom stock that I discussed in previous market roundup. In the weekly chart, for two successive weeks now, we have bullish shape and bullish color candles. In the daily chart, interestingly, the bullish headwind could catch the very bottom. From there, price went up, pulled back a little bit. On this Thursday, it broke above the memory resistance line with a cyan color candle. That was a trend following go with flow long trade signal day. One could take a long at the close of Thursday, stop would be just below recent low. In this case, we could have TKC in our watch list based on previous week's market roundup and take a low risk entry in the stock on this Thursday. We discussed all these six telecom stocks that were shared in previous market roundup and we saw how using Q analysis we could book partial profit in some of them and hold on to remaining position trying to let profit run. How we could add some of them to our watch list looking for possible buy opportunity. We are still keeping them in our watch list. And we also saw how we could add some of these stocks in our watch list and could already take a long position this week based on Q trade signal. This is how using Q360 degrees analysis, we can catch the stocks at the most opportune moment. Let me also discuss these two stocks, BCC and EVBG. We will see how using Q signals, you could probably anticipate their impending price drop. BCC earlier this has a strong up move in recent weeks it is starting to drop on this green color candle price tried to go above the memory resistance line and also this watermark resistance line but failed and closed lower very next day we had a magenta color bearish color and bearish shape candle using those signals you could Anticipate the price drop could probably take a low risk short trade and book partial profit in few days as price hit the lower boundary lines. EVPG, this stock is also in one of the weak industries of the week. It had a strong up move. However, this week price reversed sharply. Interestingly, in the daily chart, we had a series of bearish headwind signals. Also, there were multiple watermark resistance lines. Price tried to go above them but fell and dropped below them, creating a false upside breakout. The false upside breakout was accompanied by bearish headwind signal, bear release signal, and also a magenta that is bearish color candle. The candle shape was also bearish. 
looking at all of them you could probably anticipate a price drop at the close of this candle itself you could protect profit in any existing long position that you might have and also try to look for a short trade if you took a short trade by friday it has given reasonable profit the industry is weak the stocks fundamentals are weak and technicals are very weak so you might also hold on to the short position trying to let profit run in the cases of bcc and evbg you could use the q signals to anticipate their impending price drop and profit from that that is all that i plan to share in this week's market roundup thanks for joining i look forward to seeing you in our next roundup have a great weekend and trade profitably